In this video, we're going to take a look at rearranging some uh, uh, fairly common kinematics formulas. And here's uh, four um, kinematics equations or formulas uh, that we're going to work with. So the first one, we're going to take a look at uh, solving this uh, formula for the variable. Uh, and I won't say vector every time. It's the vector v sub i, the initial velocity. So we're going to solve for uh, v sub i. Now, the first thing I would want to do, I would be thinking to do, is to rearrange this so that I would get the expression that has the v sub i by itself, or isolated. And so that's the v sub i delta t, so I want to get that alone. Now right now this uh, half a delta t squared is added to that, so I would think of taking that to the other side. Some people will explain this as subtracting a half a t delta t sorry, a half a delta t squared from both sides. Or some people say, we'll take it over, and when you move it to the other side, it uh, changes sign. And that's because when you subtract a, a half a delta t squared from both sides, well, there's the minus, the subtracting. So we take that over to the other side. So we'd have uh, delta d, or, or uh, the change in displacement, uh, minus the half a delta t squared would equal the v sub i delta t. That's the only thing left on the right side now. Now, if I want to solve for uh, v sub i, I would divide out the delta t. The reason I would divide it out is because right now this delta t is multiplied by the initial velocity, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing, so we divide both sides by delta t. So these divide out. Now, there's two, two ways to, to, uh, to solve this, and I'll show you both. I'm going to show you one here, and I'll show you the other in a moment. And so this delta t actually is divided into both parts. When we do, we can actually divide it into this. Uh, the delta t goes into the delta t squared, leaving a delta t. So there's still a minus a half a delta t there. This such uh, uh, delta d is still over the delta t. Uh, so we could write the initial velocity is delta d over delta t minus a half a delta t. So that's one way you could write that. I'll, I'll explain another way after we do this. Um, just, re just remember that this delta t here, when we divided the left side by it, it's divided into both parts. So because, the, I, because I crossed this out, it's still divided into delta t. That's why it's, it's still there. And I'll explain <clears throat> a little bit more about that as we get through this next one here. So uh, the next one we're going to do is we're going to take uh, this formula and solve for the acceleration. And so, uh, again, I would want to get the expression that has the acceleration by itself. And seeing that the ex acceleration expression has a negative, there's a minus a half a delta t squared here, I would think uh, I want to make that positive. And so, now this isn't the only way you can do this, but I would take this term to the left, and so when we move it to the um, left side, it would be a half a delta t squared, uh, the half being positive, so I'll move that over to the left. And then I want it to be alone, so I would take the delta d over to the right side. So I move this to the left and the delta d to the right. And so it would look like this. So we're moving that to the left, it's positive. The final velocity times uh, delta t is already on the right. And bringing the uh, delta d over to the right side, it's minus delta d. Now the reason i got some spaces here is because the next thing I want to do is I'm trying to isolate for uh, the acceleration. So I want to get rid of the half here. Uh, so the, the way I would get rid of the half is multiply both sides by 2, 2 being the denominator, so that these 2's divide out and I get 1 times the acceleration. So that's the reason for multiplying by 2. So notice that everything has to be multiplied by 2. There's actually two terms on the right, so the final velocity times delta t has to be multiplied by 2, and so does the delta d be have to be multiplied by 2. And so this is what the next line would look like. Those 2's divide out, and we get 1a, or just a, delta t squared, equals 2 times the final velocity delta t minus 2 delta d. Now, we're trying to solve for a here. So we would divide out this delta t squared. See, right now it's multiplied by the a. So I'll divide both sides by delta t squared. It's not really important that you put brackets around the delta t. Uh, this means the change in time squared. And so these divide out. Now, this um, there's two ways to write this formula. 
I could write as a equals, and actually that's my next line here, 2 final velocity times delta t minus 2 delta d over the uh, change in time squared. So that's one way to write it. The delta t squared is actually divided into both of these. So if you wanted to simplify this, and this is just another way to do this, you could write uh, the 2 final velocity delta t over delta t squared. And so if you write this over delta t squared, then the delta t here would divide it with the delta t squared, leaving just a delta t in the bottom, in the denominator. And then there's no when we divide the delta t squared into this, there's, there's no delta t to divide it at all. So that's why it's just 2 delta d over delta t squared. So that's um, uh, another way to write this. We could have done the same thing over here. When I divided out this delta t, I, I could have not bothered divide into uh, the uh, numerator at all. So I could have actually just left this as if an initial velocity is the delta d minus a half a delta t squared. So notice that that is exactly what was up here before I divided the delta t over delta t. So I could, so these are actually equivalent. You see, if I divide the delta t into that, then that's this. If I divide the delta t into this expression, then that's what it simplifies to, because this delta t would divide out with one of the delta t's in the delta t squared up here, leaving just a single delta t. So these are two different ways to write that. Flipping over to the next page, uh, two more examples before we finish here. And so uh, we're going to take the uh, final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus 2a delta d and solve for delta d. So um, I want to get the, I'll be thinking right away, I want to get that 2a delta t uh, term alone. So let's take the initial velocity squared over to the left side or subtract uh, initial velocity squared from both sides. That's the same thing. So it would look like this. When we bring it over to the left side, it's going to be um, a minus initial, initial velocity squared. And so I want to solve for delta d, so I would divide out this 2 times the acceleration, or 2a. So we'll do that. These divide out, and there's nothing to uh, divide out or cancel here at all. So delta d is just a final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared over 2a, 2 times the acceleration. Or if you want to write like this, delta d is, and just write the uh, delta d on the left, uh, it's uh, final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared over 2a. So that's solved for delta d. Uh, last one here, the um, <clears throat> delta d equals a half uh, uh, vi plus vf times delta t. And we're asked to solve for the final velocity. So let's take the formula. Now, again, I've got a half here. And very similar to one of the examples in the previous page, I want to get rid of the half. Because I, I want to solve or isolate for final velocity. So that's how I would start simplifying this and get the final, start to get the final velocity alone. So let's multiply both sides by 2. So multiply by 2 here. Now I put the times 2 on the um, right side here. If I was writing a paper, I write, might write times 2 here so that those 2's divide out. So the reason for multiplying by the 2 is so though the 2 times a half is 1. And so we would just have 2 delta d equals vi plus vf times, in brackets, times the delta t. Now, I'm trying to solve for a final velocity, so I would next have to multiply this delta t into the brackets. And so we get multiplied by both of these terms. So v sub i delta t plus the final velocity times delta t. Now, again, I'm trying to solve for final velocity, so I'd want the term that has a final velocity by itself. So that's why I'd rearrange and take this over to the left. So it's a positive term on the right, so it would be subtracting initial velocity delta t on the left. And so it would look like this. So bring it over. We have 2 delta d minus initial velocity delta t equals the final velocity delta t on the right. And again, I'm trying to solve for v sub f. So I would get rid of the delta t by dividing out delta t. So they divide out. So final velocity would be equal to this. And of course, if you want to write the v sub f on the left, it's 2 delta d minus initial velocity delta t over delta t. Now, <clears throat> similar to what we did on the previous page, on the first page, uh, you could simplify this in a little different way if you were to think of it as this delta t is this over delta t minus this over delta t. So that's another way to write it. And the way, if you wanted to, you might want to do that if you notice that these delta t's would divide out. So if they do, 
uh, if you do that, then uh, you would have final velocity is 2 delta d over delta t minus just the initial velocity. So these are equivalent. This and this are the same thing. Uh, it really just depends on how you want to write the formula. Um, this is a little bit simpler in a way because it's just one expression over delta t. Um, this is a little simpler in a way too because it's just two simpler expressions. So it's really uh, a, lot of, a lot of times that's just per pers personal preference. So that's four examples in, in rearranging kinematics formulas. And that's the end of the video.